Good morning. Good morning. Let's all stand. We're going to sing Marvelous Light. It's a marvelous light I'm running out of darkness, out of shame. Through the cross, you are the truth, you are the life, you are the way. I once was fatherless, a stranger with no hope. Your kindness waken me, waken me from my sleep now. Your loving beckons deeply, a call to come and die. By grace now I will come and take this life, take your life. Sin has lost its power, death has lost its sting. From the grave you risen, victoriously. It's a marvelous light I'm running out of darkness, out of shame. Through the cross you are the truth, you are the life, you are the way. My dead heart now is beating, my deepest stains now clean. Your breath fills up my lungs, now I'm free, now I'm free. My dead heart now is beating, my deepest stains now clean. Your breath fills up my lungs, now I'm free, now I'm free. Lost its power, death has lost its sting. From the grave you risen victoriously. It's a marvelous light I'm running out of darkness, out of shame. Through the cross you are the truth, you are the life, you are the way. It's a marvelous light I'm running Out of darkness, out of shame Through the cross you are the truth You are the life, you are the way Amen, amen Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Hey, we're certainly glad to have you If you're visiting with us for the first time Or if you're watching online, welcome to Landmark Missionary Baptist Church, uh, we're glad to have you. We hope you came to lift up your hearts and to prepare your hearts to hear the word that Brother Pete has this morning. And guys, we have been, this has been happening uh, so much lately, and I'm so happy for it. But we have another baptism this morning. Praise God. Amen. I ask that you go ahead and be seated as we get ready to watch this baptism. And then at the conclusion of the baptism, if our ushers wouldn't mind to go ahead and make their way up to the front, we'll receive the offering this morning, and we'll continue on with our service. Brother Pete. Good morning, Landmark. It's good to be in God's house today, man, and we're glad you're here, and I'm glad to be here with Stetson. Stetson gave his life to Christ, and he is following the Lord in scriptural baptism and rejoicing in his decision, and so we're going to go ahead and just celebrate. you got a lot of family out there, right? But we're going to look that way because we're nervous, right? I'm nervous too, okay? i got to look at him. You don't have to, okay? All good? All right. We're proud of him and his decision. You pray for him. It's, a pr it's an exciting thing to see a young man following the steps of Jesus at this age, okay? In obedience to the commands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and based on your public profession of faith in him as your loving Savior, and by the authority of the landmark Missionary Baptist Church, I do baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I'd like to ask our ushers to make your way, please. So we're certainly glad to have you if you're visiting with us, and uh, we're going to get ready to take our offering at this time. If you feel led to give, give. This is a time of worship as well. And uh, at this time, Brother Johnny Penny, would you mind us up in a word of prayer, please?
Thank you all for that song. There is no one like Jesus. There's no one like him. We're going to sing Hosanna. Praise is rising. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring. Hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. Washed away. saves us worthy of all our praises Hosanna Hosanna come have your way among us we welcome you here Lord Jesus hear the sound of hearts return When we see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, come every way among us, we welcome you here, Lord Jesus. song here. Let's see if we got our hymnals. Let's turn to 636 and sing I Must Tell Jesus. If you know this song, let's sing this out. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, He kindly will help me. And he And I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. And I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, because Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. And I must tell Jesus all of my troubles. A kind, compassionate friend. If I but ask him, and he will deliver. Make up my troubles quickly in me. Let's sing. And I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear my burdens alone. And I must tell Jesus. Tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. And oh, how the world to evil allures me. Oh, how my heart is tempted 
to sin I must tell Jesus And he will help me Over the world A victory win And I must tell Jesus I must tell Jesus I cannot bear these burdens alone I must tell Jesus Alone. Let's hear that choir. And I must tell Jesus, and I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, and Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Clap it up. He deserved the clap. I like it. I'm having fun this morning, Brother Pete. I'm serious. Hey, we're going to do this. It's How Great Is Our God. We've done this song for quite a few number of years. Extremely, extremely, extremely important in my life personally. I truly feel like I can give my heart to God with this song. I pray that you join with me on this. The splendor of the King Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide at his voice, he trembles at his voice. Now great is our God, and sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great.
as we bow our heads. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you so much, and we thank you so much for being able to come into your house this morning, not only to hear our Sunday school word, but Lord, to hear and lift our voices up to you, God. You are the audience of one, and you are the reason that we are here. Lord, we love you, and we want to lift up our voices. There's never been a more beautifully written song than how great thou art, Lord. How great are you, Lord, that you came and sent your son to die for us on the cross, Lord. That you've given us the, the freedom and the easy gift to accept you, to be with you eternally, Lord. I pray if there's someone here that they don't know you today, that, Lord, you would prick their hearts and make them miserable. Make them miserable to hear your word, Lord, and so they may come to know you before it's too late, God. You can do all these things, Lord, and it's in your son's holy name we pray. Amen. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. It's good. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed, then sings my soul. From lofty mountain grandeur And hear that brook And hear the brook And feel the gentle breeze And feel the gentle breeze Let's lift it up And sings my soul My Savior God to
when Christ shall come with clouds of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart and then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then saints my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art Thank you, church, and your worship this morning. I want to invite you to stand with me as you read the Word of God in Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter number 3. We've had a wonderful morning of worship. Man, thank you, church, for being a part of this in a big way. We want to celebrate the goodness of God, and we get to do that on Sundays. We get to do that every day, but it's great when we just get to come together and do it. So we're going to be doing that a lot this month. Um, uh, today is the one day that's not a quote-unquote kind of recognized day in that respect. We're going to celebrate God through our mothers next Sunday. We're going to celebrate God through our graduates in two weeks. And then we're going to celebrate God for all the fallen on Memorial Day. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that. But today's a very special day as well, as you'll see. I just want to look at two verses at the end of Ephesians chapter 3. God's Word says, Now unto him... And I love how Paul just kind of raises this to another level in describing the goodness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Father God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your infinite power. We thank you for your glory, and we want to celebrate you. Let it not be about us. From the baptism of Stetson, we celebrate you. Father, from the songs that we just sung, we celebrate you. Through the word that is preached, we still celebrate you. Father, you are so, so loving, so caring, so forgiving, and we need all of that and then some. And may we return it to you in our worship of you now, Father, as we have throughout this service. We rejoice in what you're still to do, and we look forward to it. And we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. So some of you have already taken offense because I made today kind of sound almost like a letdown, and it's not. It's Sunday. It's God's day. But it's, there's two important dates about today. First of all, I got to give props where it's due. It's my mother-in-law's birthday, so happy birthday, Mama. And so if she's watching, I just want to make sure she knows that. But the second thing that we celebrate, anybody know what today is? Cinco de Mayo, right? Cinco de Mayo. You, you guys knew that, right? 
it's, it comes after May the 4th be we, I mean, May the 4th, right? We already know our days and stuff. So, um, I mean, today's Cinco de Mayo. It's the day of celebration of Mexico's defeat over the second French empire at the Battle of Puebla in 1862. But you already knew that. Neither did I. Because we have Americanized this holiday or made it into a special day. Because most of us don't think of this battle victory in the name of Mexico and what they were able to accomplish. No, we think of festivity, food, more festivity, food, uh, even extra festivity, i.e. partying, and some food along the way. Because this, And there's a lot of businesses that are marketing that, and that's their deal. I, most of us don't think of Cinco de Mayo uh, the way it probably was initially uh, started. Nobody started Cinco de Mayo and said, hey guys, let's party. But it became that. Sadly, we've changed what honor goes to God on Sunday, or should go to God, and we've kind of done it like we've done Cinco de Mayo. We've altered the meaning entirely. Sunday is now Sunday fun day. Sunday me day. Sunday stay out of my business day, preacher, kind of thing. And it's never intended. You understand the reason we do life in Christ on Sunday mornings here at Landmark Missionary Baptist Church and churches all across the world do this it's because we celebrate the risen Savior. And it's on Sunday that that day occurred. And so we just simply want to come together in Jesus' name to honor him and to glorify him. And this is what this whole series about honor is about. We want to elevate Christ. Because even when we see people do what they do in the name of Jesus, whether it's a singer on the stage or the preacher, lest we misunderstand it's not about what we're doing. It's about what he's already doing and done. And we just want to echo that. So we want to honor God. And that's what Paul is kind of reminding the church at Ephesus and is still reminding us in 2024 today when we open up his word. It's like he's writing us and he's looking at us. And you have to look at the whole context of Ephesians. And I'd encourage you to do that at your convenience or even more importantly, sooner than later. And when you read that, you're going to see what I saw. It's like he's just saying, hey, guys, I like what you got, but get it together. <laughs> get it together. God is so very worthy of our honor and praise. Let's not forget the main thing is still the main thing. So as we begin this series in call of honor, I want to honor the Lord with what you've been doing all morning. And I hope it's not just a Sunday morning thing. I hope we do it all week long. Rejoice. Uh, Paul writes the church of Philippi, I believe, and says rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. He's like, he's echoing in case we missed it the first time he says it. And we want to keep it where it's at. So I want you to see a couple things. I got you four quick points and we're going to be done, but this is good stuff. Man, I love this, what we, he shows here. So in verse 20 in the beginning, he, and it really just says now unto him, but then if you took out all the guts of the message of the rest of the verses, it's, it's like unto him, and you get down to it, it says, be glory in verse 21. And you get all the accolades and the descriptions in between. But unto him, so we know who we're talking to, and what are we doing here? Be glory. And so this is another word for what we would say in our culture today, honor and, and recognition, and rightfully so. So I want you to see, first of all, we honor and rejoice in dedication to him. It's with our dedication. We think about dedications in a lot of ways, but in light of the greatness of God, uh, in the middle of this prayer that Paul is echoing, if you will, he says, I want to honor you, God. I want to honor you. I want to lift you up. Some of you go old school with me, and I don't know if they do it anymore. I don't really listen to, I don't really, I don't know last time I've actually listened to secular radio of any sort. But I remember they'd have these dedications, these dedications. Some of y'all still be listening to like Delilah and stuff. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about, Okay. I mean, a woman named Delilah, I read her name in the Bible once, I just kind of, but anyway, now, you know, that's her radio name or whatever, and so you call in, and you make these dedications, and that's kind of the idea, I want to, I want to dedicate this song to my girl, or my guy, and, and you play some lovey-dovey song, and you're in brownie points, guys, you know what I'm talking about, you, you know, these things where the girl usually does this, and all these things, or maybe it's to a mom or dad or somebody significant in your life, dedication, well, our dedication Nothing wrong with, you know, honoring and loving on uh, 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 somebody important in your life. 
But lest we forget, if our dedication doesn't first and foremost start with God, woo, it's a slippery slope, y'all. But when we keep it where it belongs and we start with him and we give him praise, we give him honor, we give him glory. Honor has the idea of singling out, giving tribute. Um, we put literally the spotlight on him, not on us, on him for his greatness, his goodness, his majesty, and everything about him. And that's why Paul just kind of dives into these, these uh, wonderful descriptions for us of who he is because he wants him to know how much he means to him and how he wants the Ephesian readers and, and, and the, the, the pastor would read this letter to the church and he wants them to get a hold of this. And we do this in so many wonderful ways and we're dedicating our lives to him. We sing praises to him as we've done. We, we, we pray to him and we, we bow to him and worship and love in our private time and we open his word and let him talk to us. And we even have offertories where we give back to him. He's given us everything, and we're just giving a very small fraction back. But it means a lot to him. And so we want to let him know how much we love him. And, and we can't ever match, uh, match all of his giving and goodness to us. But we try to do our best in giving of our love, our devotion, our tithes and offerings and such. So when we focus on our dedication, it makes it a lot easier to, for us to dive into the next point, and that's what Paul continues with in the latter half of verse 20. Our dedication inwardly be, and, and, and externalized becomes an outward declaration. Dedication leads to declaration. Uh, when you love something or someone, you share that. And this is what Paul does here in this verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, this is an infinite kind of deal. Um, it, it goes beyond anything that you and I can imagine. He, he, he goes in to say, um, according to the power, God's power. So let's not confuse that for us because our dedication's on him, not on what we are. Because the Bible tells us without him, we can literally do nothing. So it's through his power that worketh in us. So it's what fuels the engines. It's what uh, keeps us going. It uh, gets us started, should we even say. And so when we see all these things, my goodness, it's so beautiful. So when you honor, you give tribute via your testimony. You say, well, pastor, I'm not one of those people that can stand up in church. That's okay. That's not what I'm asking you. You have a testimony in your life. People know you as this, or people know you about, about you in this way. So you have something that speaks to who you are. And, and one of the things I hoped in my Christian life, and I hope in each of our Christian lives, is that when they bring up my name or they bring up your name, uh, not even before they bring up landmark, let's bring up Jesus. Because without Jesus, is there a landmark? No. So we want people to understand who we are in Christ, and because of Christ, then landmark, and then all the wonderful things that come in our Christian faith. So Paul lists a few of the many testaments of praise. And he kind of breaks this down in verse 20. And I got four, or I got three A's out of this. First of all, God, you are able. God, you are able. Now, we read the, the long list, and I only got a few listed, of the many in the Old Testament. You know, Moses would have had no trouble telling us about, God, you are able. I mean, he, he saw it. I mean, he's seen a stick turn into a snake and then become a stick. He's seen a sea just miraculously part. God, you are able. Daniel could speak to this. Daniel could say, yeah, I took a nap on some lions once. That was an interesting deal. I wouldn't suggest it because the king found out the next day it doesn't end well. But for me, it worked out well. Why? Because God, you are able. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. God, you are able. The flames can't touch me. They got the guys throwing us in, but it didn't touch us. God, matter of fact, four in the fire. Mike, I think you brought something up on that the other day, yesterday. Good job. God, you are able. David, you know. All of this size compared to Goliath, you know, this size, you know, he would have made a jillion dollars in the NBA, but he couldn't beat a little boy in a slingshot contest, right? You know why? Because God, you are able. It's about God. Jairus, I, let's not bring out, let's not forget some of the unsung hero guys in the Bible. Oh, Jairus had the faith and, and said, I, 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 God heal my child and, and, ra and God raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. God, you are able. We see this over and over and over and about. But you, you know the Bible stories, but you also know it in real life. Because some are fighting all the ailments that, 
the devil tries to bring to tempt us to believe that God isn't able to the diseased that are here today. You may be fighting disease, but God is still able. Don't give up hope to those that are in debt, that are struggling way over their head. Maybe you did it to yourself, or maybe you've, you've just, it's just things that have happened in life, consequences of the things around us. But God, you are still able. Maybe you, you're struggling with the drunk and, and the drugs, the drinking and the drugs and, and the addictions that circle all the time. God, you're still able. Defeats in life. God, you're still able. Divorce in life. God, you're still able. Death is horrible and it stings, but my God is still able. Depression is a real thing, but greater than depression is God. God, you're still able. Do we get to keep going on or have we missed the memo? Because sometimes we forget as we do life and as we go to church and as we have our Bibles that we go right from these things and go right back down to the negative pits. And I'm going to tell you, God's still able. He's able in the Old Testament. He's able in the New Testament. He's able today. Let's not minimize that God is able. Second of all, we see God, you give an abundance. God, you give it super abundance. God, it, it's, it's like that old song, drinking, drinking from the saucer. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about because we don't have coffee and teacups like we used to, but they used to have those saucers underneath. We were digging. We were excavating, correct? Would that be a better term? through boxes and stuff we haven't seen in 15 months. And, and, and we found one of these big, of many, my wife's from Texas and she didn't know it because every mug she has is about this big, you know. Coffee's good, y'all, just saying. I just go back and forth to get my steps in a little bit. She just does it all in one fell swoop or two. But anyway, one of those that was gifted to her had a saucer underneath and it reminded me of the old song, drinking from the saucer. Why? Because the cup's overflowing and that's the kind of description that God brings. I mean, you, you need proof. I know, y'all ain't, ain't seeing this, okay? Let me help you out, okay? So nobody in their mind, I, I know we have these. I, I know there's a reason, Miss Susan, that these are in the kitchen. Uh, there's probably for some kids or, you know, I don't know, maybe somebody had to cut down on their caffeine intake. This is never anything I want to, if I drink out of this once, five minutes later, let me have a refill, please, because that's not going to last long, right? But nothing wrong. I'm not trying to throw shade if that's your deal, Okay. This isn't the kind of cup size I want to drink out of typically, or that, or I'm just going to go find me another extra dose somewhere if I can do that, because that's kind of small. I remember when I was a kid, I would drink out of stuff like this, but this isn't my God. Now, this is what the world offers us, and we can't see it, and we wonder why we're spiritually dehydrated. Hey, I'm going to go get my fill with the guys. Well, you're going to get about that much, and it's, not, it's going to leave you even thirstier because the world doesn't satisfy. I'm going to go get this with, my, with this, because and it may not even be anything horribly sinful. You're just trying to replace the things of God with stuff like this. This is not going to last, especially in the Texas heat, okay? But the world is hotter than Texas heat in the summer, okay? And it'll really do a number on it. What we need is to supersize, in Jesus' name, just ignore the gator thing, because there hadn't been a lot of abundance come out of Gainesville in a while. But anyway, you know what? That's all right. I needed an illustration. That was the closest thing. See the difference? This is what the world says, but this is my God, y'all. This is what he does if we'll give him opportunity. And last time I checked, that trumps that about four or five times over, okay? So there. If I wanted to tell a knock-knock joke, knock-knock, who's there? Orange. Orange, orange who? Aren't you glad I showed you that? Okay, there you go. I am so, I don't know if that's a sugar or not. Nothing spiritual at all, but I just want to make sure you were still listening, okay? Thirdly, my wife sighs, which means, yeah, good job, Pete. So I, I appreciate She's always good. Let me read something to you. Thirdly, able, abundance. What about God and his accomplishments? I, I like the way this reads, and I want to share this with you because I came across this a little bit later. Uh, of course, I thought I had it, and there it is. So... I want you to think about it from this angle, okay? Um, glory to him in the church. Whoops, wrong one. We're not there yet. Verse 20. Now, all glory to God, who is able, there's your word, through his mighty power at work within us. Why? To accomplish infinitely. I like that word because that means it's, there's no limit. More than we might ask or think. That's our God. Ephesus was a great city of about 40 to 50,000 people by the time Paul is writing this church there. And he's, it's, it's, it's on a major travel route. 
it's not too far inland from the Mediterranean Sea, so there's a lot of commerce and a lot of people, and there's a lot going on. So there's a lot of distraction, and then you've got Diana, and, and that's the temple there with pagan worship that's right there. So there's, there's a lot of this and a lot of this all going on, and, and, and the world will say, you can get full, and you don't need your God, and you've got all this commerce. You can sustain yourself. You can build yourself up. You can do this. And, that's, and we forget our declaration and our dedication because we're too busy filling ourselves if we're not careful. This church was an interesting church, and they weren't without their problems, as no church is without their problems, by the way. But this church was an infusion in a very changing world of, in Christian faith of Jews and Gentiles. And you want to rock the boat in the early church, just go ahead and throw some Jews and Gentiles in the mix and try to have a business meeting, let alone worship. That's going to be fun because these guys don't like these guys and these guys don't like these guys. I was watching an episode of The Chosen this morning. I was reminded of that about how the bickering goes on and the fighting and all the things that go with it. And I'm just like, here we are. And in spite of all these challenges, all these what we would consider, they live in a bad city. They live in a people that are so self-indulgent, they're more worried about building themselves up and building upon their name and their brand over the name of Christ and who he is in the cross. So all these things are conflicting. You, and then inside the church, there's some, and you have to read some of this and you'd see what we're talking about in the book of Ephesians where there's some problems going on. And in spite of all those challenges, yes, God is still able. Yes, God still gives in superabundance. And yes, God can accomplish whatever he wants in us. And I'm so thankful for that because let's get real. We're not perfect, and we won't be this side of glory. So rather than striving towards perfection, why not move towards the cross? Why not remember who we are? Because I think if I remember right, Paul describes later on that it's been nailed to the cross. So if my identity is not so much about me trying to be my best, and rather than that, me just come to the cross and give him what is me so that he can get the best out of me. You see the difference? This is what God wants. Then the accomplishments can really get going. But if we have our Christian beauty contest in the name of I'm more spiritual than you are, well, that just always goes south. And let me just tell you, I don't want to be a judge in that, nor do I even want to be a participant, because I'd probably disappoint y'all. Because just because you see the guy on Sunday morning, don't kid yourself, I I've got a temper at times. I get a little frustrated. I play golf. Every golfer's got a temper. They just may not say it out loud, okay? I, 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 we struggle. I, I sin. I, I'm a man. You're, you're, a, you're a person. You have a sin nature too. Quit lying, okay? Every one of us, see? We, we struggle. But our declaration's not in ourselves, so that's the great part because we declare Jesus. and We declare victory in him. So this is how the gospel comes alive when people get together in the name of Christ. And we find freedom that he's able to accomplish that and break the chains. Our lives become a declaration and honor to him because it's not through us that we can find that. It's only through him. And it becomes a literal celebration. That's our third point. A literal celebration in the life of the church. That's when we get to verse 21. Unto him be glory. Glory is a great word. Don't get scared of it. Don't get scared. I remember listening to old time preachers. And, and man, you get them guys, you, see them, you, ever, you ever been in those churches or watch them churches, the guy gets a hanky out? Every, all them old camp meeting preachers had them hankies, you know? And they start, people in the crowd start waving theirs, you know? I don't know if they were surrendering or if they were just in the mood or what, but there was a testament of God's glory, the way they would react. Glory is an interesting, it's kind of a combination. It's a revelation, so it's glory of God. Keep that in mind. While it's also, where's the word I'm looking for? Recognition, revelation, recognition. So it's not just glory of God, but it's glory to God. And so they're, they're, they're all blend together. We, he brings it to us, and we in turn recognize him. This kind of reminds me of a popular song that in the Christian movement, as long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord. Yeah, amen. Yes. I hope so. Because if you don't, check the polls. Make sure you know Jesus. I want to praise him. I want to give him glory. I want to give him honor. Because that's where it all starts. It, I've got to show you something here. hope I'm not going to get in trouble for this. Miss Martha, it was in there. 
So I'll give it back to you later. Somebody, somebody must have borrowed it, okay? So kids don't do this in church, only the preacher. And I didn't talk to Brother Tad, but I'm going to assume that security is not going to hate me for this. And um, we might want to edit the video at this point going forward. Um, this is a candle. A lot of potential, right? A lot of opportunity, especially if you turn the lights out. I mean, it, it, you know, it could be very handy. We saw what that looked like last Sunday night, right? Um, but what good is this in this way? It's not one of those, it's not one of those smelly ones. What's, what's, what's this good for right here? Ornament at best, but give it a light, not only does it accomplish great things, but it fulfills its purpose. Because the only purpose really for a candle is to be lit, correct? And this is who we are in Christ. See, we're the candle. Let's not kid ourselves. We're not the flame. We're the candle. The Bible talks about that in the book of Revelation, the seven candlesticks, the candles. And these are representative of churches. But do you remember who is described as the flame? The Spirit of God. And when we allow God to work and empower us, we see the greater purpose of the church, we see the greater purpose in our individual lives, and we see great things accomplished because the candle gives sight. Miss Martha, we see that at Christmas. It brings illumination in the midst of darkness. One lit candle can instantly dispel so much darkness that's all around us. You get a room full of lit candles, wow. You see where I'm going, I hope, because I don't want to leave this going because that will become a distraction. I just want to see, this is what it looks like when we celebrate him and his goodness. It makes all the difference in the world, but it doesn't stop with just a celebration. Look at the end of verse 21. You're thinking, okay, here we go with that filler like you did last week, the pillowy landing kind of thing. Oh, uh, dear, be glory in the church. Yep, by Christ Jesus, what we know, it's, it's for him and through him. Okay, you've already established the glory part. But watch this. Why do we got all this jargon here? And I don't mean that disrespectfully, because as a kid, that's what I thought. Because I didn't hear throughout all ages, world without end. What's that mean? Amen. Okay. So we go from the celebration, but isn't it good when next generation and next generation and next generation can pick up on something? You know, it's so funny how classic songs can carry over into generations. I mean, there's probably like three of y'all in here that don't know the song, Don't Stop Believing," right? I can tell you when I watched Journey on MTV when I was 12, 13 years old, and they were on. And I was like, ah, it's just a song. Who knew that every commercial now has it? And then you get groups together. I watched a couple guys win a golf tournament in New Orleans last week, and they're singing it after the tournament. You know, every, every sports thing now, you got to have that song playing in the background. Who knew? Those guys didn't. They were just writing a song, putting it on an album. And generation later, and another generation, and people keep singing a song that people weren't even around for back in the day. This is generational. Well, bigger than that song, way before that is the message of Christ. And he tells us that this isn't supposed to stop. This is supposed to be a continuation. His word is a continuation. The perpetuity of the church is a long, short, big word for the fact that the churches don't stop. As long as we continue to do the work of the Lord Jesus, things can go. So the generational thing keeps going. Keep the glory of God in and through Landmark Missionary Baptist Church. That's what Paul's writing us. That doesn't mean it is, it's an exclusive thing. Austin, it means we pass it on. There's your song, brother, Okay. We don't keep it to ourselves. We let a community know about it. We might have some fish while we're doing it. That's okay. Jesus did, by the way. It's all right. I'll talk about that later on tonight. The reality is, this is exciting. Why? Because of the drums? Because we got a cross on the stage? No, no, no. They're parts of it. The excitement is the message. The excitement is Jesus Christ. The fact that I'm miserable, that I, I don't get it, that I'm falling apart all the time and I can't keep my sugar up here and I'm trying to, it, 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 that's, that's life and it's my story and your story probably has similarities in various ways. The reality is what makes us go, what makes us do is because what the gospel does is it crosses generational lines and you know, well, it's not relevant anymore. You haven't got a hold of Jesus if that's your answer. I've never heard of something so satanic in all my life, as somebody say, the gospel has no relevance today. That's about as satanic as it gets.
Because that's not something that comes from heaven, but I can tell you it comes from the pits of hell. Why would you want to accept something so foolish? You don't need a, 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 a different stage to be relevant. You can do that. I don't think the stage really matters, personally. I'm going to really rock your world now. This is where I get in trouble. I don't think you have to have a steeple to be relevant. Jesus never did. I don't care, think it matters whether you have this kind of pulpit or a big fancy pulpit. I don't think it matters whether you have a full choir or no choir. I, I think we make a lot of things that aren't necessarily in the Bible what they want to say. And I love every one of those aspects. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But let's keep the main thing the main thing. And this is why it crosses generational boundaries. You do realize there's people in Africa that don't have any of what we have right now and they're worshiping Jesus fine. Let's be real careful we don't Americanize the gospel because that's a danger. I like America and I love the gospel, but we, we're not exclusive friends. Jesus makes all the difference. Jesus is truly the one. And when we get a hold of what he's doing, we won't want to keep it too long because there's too many good people that need to hear about it. There's too many people that need to know, like Ephesus did, like Landmark, that we must not stop believing. I got to hurry and I got, I got four quick bullet points and we're done. Let me give you some predators to the generations. Ready? Because they're real. Number one is worldliness. I've already kind of hammered that. We're so full of sin in this world. We don't make enough room for Jesus. Take the pie graph. You guys that are still in school or remember school and you take the pie graph, you've got to give Jesus all that because if you start filling it in with your stuff and the worldly stuff, you're going to find you're going to run into problems. That also carries over into busyness. This is a very busy world we live in. Everybody's got all these things to do and nobody has time and we carve and we cram for Jesus while we take our time in lavishing upon ourselves and we're very busy with the matters of self and we have no time for Jesus and that's a very dangerous thing. It's a predator to the generational glory of God. Laziness. We work six days a week because you know what Sunday now is? It's our day off that we don't have time for anything but me. I'm going to catch up on my yard. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this and I don't have time. So laziness now steps in. And lastly, and this is one that I'm speaking to all of us because you say, well, I'm none of those things. I'm here, right? What about when we get monotonous? God forbid. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're going to do something funky one time. You ready? Can you say funky on Sunday morning? Austin, I'm going to preach, and then we're going to go away celebrating and singing. And then we're going to really rock the boat, okay? Well, well, well that's kind of, no, that's called monotonous if you're not careful. We always have the offering here. When we, you see what, you can get in a routine sometimes, and it's so cut and dry, you forget about what we're doing here. God forbid, Brother David, I was so impressed with our church the lights went out, and Brother David said, let's gather in, and nobody grumbled, and everybody somewhat moved at least a little bit. If I ask somebody on to move right now, oh, I'm not moving right now. I've been sitting here 100 years, you know, 102. You know, we got to go a little bit past the church date just because. This is the way we are. What happens? We get monotonous. Now, look, Easter Sunday, y'all mess with me, because I know where all y'all pretty much sit, and I can kind of see where you are. Okay, I know who was here. Easter Sunday, I had no idea who was here, because... A lot of people were moved around because of the crowds. It's okay. I'm not asking you to change your seat. Just be careful that we don't get so monotonous when it comes to the gospel, so monotonous with our praise, so monotonous in the way we do things. Yeah, maybe one time we just go a cappella. Sorry, praise team. No, no offense. Maybe we just go a cappella one time. What would we do with that? I don't know. But it, it would just be something different. I don't know. We do things differently periodically just because, but I know sometimes it's dangerous if we just get so cut and dry. Churches die on the vine because they're so, um, and leaders can fall into this trap too, comfortable and routine, that we lose our place in the gospel. You know, I heard this in conclusion. In the old days, <laughs> kids, this is going way back, even though they got home from church, they would stay in their church clothes throughout the day. Two reasons why. One, because their focus was going to be on the things of God over the things of the world. So they weren't going to worry about working or doing what they normally did. Go put your work clothes on. They kept their church clothes on because that's what they stayed in. Two, so they can remain focused on why they did what they did and they didn't forget it the rest of the day. And it reminded them as they were in those clothes that were maybe a little nicer, neater than the average set of clothes or whatever, that they were special for church because they wanted to honor God. They wanted to remember him. You know, I'm reminded that the Bible tells us to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe today the problem with honoring him is we haven't put him on. We haven't trusted him as our Savior. Or sadly, not in the name of what we call losing our salvation, but just the fact we've forgotten to give him honor. We keep taking our clothes off. We keep forgetting that 
We're to walk in Christ and live in Christ. Because we don't worry about clothes. We clothe Jesus within our hearts. We close our lives within, with, the, with the attire of Christ in our hearts. And that's what he wants for us. That's what he set aside for us. And that's why we do church life. And that's why we do scriptures. That's why we sing the songs of praise so that we can gather together and celebrate him. I want to invite you to do that this morning. I want to invite you to say, I want to follow Jesus in my life. And I don't know why I haven't been, but I'm ready. That may look like you coming and saying, I want to decide to accept him as my savior. And that'd be awesome. That'd be the best decision you can ever make, in fact. Or maybe that decision comes down to you saying, I, I need to do like Stetson did. Like others have done recently. And I want to be baptized because I'm going to heaven. Not to get to heaven. I'm already going to heaven. I just want to be a part of the church family here. Or maybe there's some personal matters that you and God need to take care of. The worldliness, the monotonous, the laziness. I don't know what it is. It's gotten in the way. Not only for our generation, but the generations to come as the Lord tarries. Father God, may you get glory from these decisions that are made. We all will decide what we do with you this morning. Some will say yes, and still some will say no. May we say yes and receive you today in whatever capacity that is as we follow your Spirit's lead. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.